This is For the Governed, a podcast series brought to you by Athlon. Here are your hosts, Tim Markison and Ron Cates. I'm Ron. This is Tim. Welcome to another exciting episode of our podcast. Tim, you're the founder and CEO of Athlons. We make incredible athletic equipment, shoes, mounds, other things. Yep. But but it's bigger than that, I know, in your mind, and it's what motivates all of us here at Athlons every single day. So I would like you to elaborate on some of the behind-the-scenes mission and purpose of why you're doing this. Sure. So our, our, our mission is to help make the world a little bit better place. We start with trying to uh, creating products that help people enjoy life a little bit more. Um, you know, so through our athletic shoes, our golf shoes in particular, uh, they help create a, a better foundation for people to execute a golf swing so they can play golf a little bit better. You know, and as we've talked about before, you know, better play equals a better day. You know, we play better, we feel better. But that's, that's just really a, a small part in my mind of what, what we're trying to represent at Athlons. One of the things that's really important to me, besides just making quality product, is to be able to, to back up our statements with evidence and data. So when we say something works, we, we've done the testing, um, we've done the mathematical modeling to, to prove and substantiate what we say. You know, there's so much with advertising this day that it's expected to be um, exaggerated to the, or to sensationalize the normal or commonplace, um, you know, we're trying to bring truth and integrity into, into our messaging so that when you hear about Athlons and you hear about our products, it's, okay, yeah, I, I know they've done their homework. I know what they're telling me is true. That, that's part of the image that, that we're trying to represent and what I, I believe firmly in, in how we conduct our business within Athlons amongst each other, and then how we interface with, um, with our customers and, and other people in the world. And then to me, the, the overwhelming objective for me is to re, uh, create more awareness with respect to preventing child abuse. I'm a, a victim of, of child abuse myself, so I know firsthand the adverse effects that it has on a person as a child, but also how it carries into adulthood. And without proper support and, and working on that, it, it doesn't go away just because you become an adult. When the physical abuse stops, um, the emotional scarring continues, and it continues until we work on it. So, so my hope uh, with as Athalons becomes a household name that when people hear the word Athlons, they can't help but think about prevent child abuse. All right, so you mentioned three important prongs of a mission, the last being by far the most important, but let me walk you through the other two so you can elaborate a little bit. The first is having a positive impact on the world by making athletic equipment. That seems like a stretch, but I get it. Because again, when I go out and have a, a good day on the bike or a good day running or a good day golfing, it makes my entire day better. You've said this before, but food tastes better. You know, your, your wife looks a little bit better. You've said, I think she looks great all the time, but I, I understand it does improve your day. So something as small as creating equipment like a shoe that has a, a positive impact on performance, that might seem like a small thing, but you add it up, it's actually a pretty big deal. Now, too, you talked about marketing. Now, I'm a marketing guy, and I, we agree 100%. I know that today only 14% of people trust ads. Mm -hmm where 84% trust an online recommendation from a stranger, someone they don't know, 91% of it's somebody in their network is because ads have gotten ridiculous. We, we almost not just tune them out, but we also lower the levels in everything automatically. If they say it does X, we assume it probably does 50% X. You know, if it says it does Y, we assume it does, you know, 25% of Y. And, and that's been a challenge because we're at Athlons, we market, in, in a place where other companies make outrageous claims and we refuse to. Uh, so I think it's actually a good thing because it's refreshing. I think the people are smart. I think the word of mouth has shown that, you know, this is science proven, math proven. These claims we make about shoes and proven performance are based on science. And then we've got people like Bernard Langer, you know, switching to the shoe after 41 years in another shoe because it makes him hit the ball better. So I, I love, I feel great about being here as a marketing guy because we get to be 100% completely honest because the thing actually works. Now, the third and then by far the most important um, 
trying to make the Athlon's name synonymous with ending child abuse, that's a lofty goal. What are some of the first steps in that? How, how does that happen? So, yeah, that's that's a big question and, and quite a lofty goal. You know, part of it is we have to get we have to get our name out there and, and recognized. And the things you mentioned, you know, with Bernard Langer, the quality of our shoe, the integrity of our messaging, um, you know, with respect to that messaging, uh, I just want to interject that here is, you know, our, our shoe is not going to make you a scratch golfer, but it is going to it is going to make a, a, a notable improvement. So if you're a, a 10 handicap, you might pick up a stroke or two. Uh, if you're a 25 handicap, you may pick up three or four strokes, but it's going to give you a more stable base, uh, a little bit more power and more consistency. So as you said, Bernard, uh, he just, he hits the ball better. You know, that was his assessment when he was looking at our shoe and several others to, to start wearing uh, this year. But Tim, the, the best testimonial ever, which the rest of the world won't understand, but, uh, but I understand, my ex-wife got a pair, and she told me that she took six strokes off her best game ever. When your ex-wife compliments you on something that you're doing, you know that's pretty legit. Yeah, that's that's a good testimony. Yeah. Um, so, but but with respect to preventing child abuse uh, and creating more awareness, I I started dealing with my uh, abuse issues. I, I was sexually and physically abused as a child. Uh, I started dealing with that when I was in my uh, late 20s, uh, early 30s, so, you know, 30 years ago now. And at that time, it was estimated that one in four women were sexually assaulted as children and one in six men were sexually assaulted as children. Here we are 30 years later, and those statistics are still essentially the same. One in four women were sexually assaulted as children and one in six men were sexually assaulted as children. Um, I... I I can't accept that. I can't accept that we can't make improvement. And, and, and it's, a, it's a difficult subject to talk about. I mean, nobody likes to hear about children being abused, especially when it comes to sexual abuse. And personally, I, I didn't want to talk about it. I, I didn't want people to know that that, that happened to me. Um, and I certainly didn't want to talk about it. But in my mind, if I, if I don't talk about it, well, then my silence is acknowledging that it's okay, and it's not okay. So it's far from okay, and I think everyone knows that. What can people do? I mean, it's, it's great that Athlons <clears throat> triggers them, makes them yep. think about trying to prevent child abuse. What's the action that they can take in that name? Yeah, so, so what we're doing is we work with uh, Joe Torrey Safe at Home. Uh, they're an organization that creates awareness about uh, child abuse and, and teaches children how to, to deal with it if they're in a, in a situation where they are being abused. And it, it provides education. So there's a lot of things that they do. And there's a lot of organizations out there that do a lot of good work uh, helping people uh, deal with the after effects of, of being abused. Um, but you know they're under most of them are underfunded they're understaffed so there's only so much that they can do and i'm not trying to create another organization to help i want to create awareness so that we can get all those entities that are doing a good job more resources more financial resources more uh, human resources to help people recover, but then also make it more acceptable to just talk about it, talk about the, the feelings, the after effects of having been a victim of child abuse, because um, it, it has such a negative effect on adults. Um, you know, and I, and I believe that if we get people consciously thinking about preventing child abuse. So as more and more people hear about us and more and more people associate that with preventing child abuse, we're raising the social consciousness. And to me, that's when we can actually start to make a difference. If it's on everybody's mind, prevent child abuse, well, then we can actually start taking more and more action to do that. And, you know, maybe 10 years from now, instead of one in four girls, it's one in four and a half. And instead of one in six boys, maybe it's one in seven boys. And then in 20 years, it goes down again in half. And maybe, you know, in, in uh, my granddaughter's lifetime, she's two and a half now, maybe we see that to go down to one in 20 or one in 50, how awesome would that be?